It's been over a week since the historic latest UFO witness hearing. In this episode, we will analyze the events of that day, what was asked, what was answered, and we will also look at what has happened since and what to expect in the future. Hello and welcome to this episode of Mysteries with a History, where you'll be taken on a wild ride into the unknown, the strange, and the mysterious. Like you, I have questions, and like you, I want answers. And with each episode together, we will peel away the fears to look for the truth. So let me bring in my co-host, Jimmy Church of Fate of Black Radio. What is up, Christina? And uh, tap on your microphone. Okay, it is on. Okay. Just throwing you off. Throwing a you off. A little bit. A little bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, bring it closer to you. Bring bring, bring it closer to you. Now speak. Hello. Yeah, that's much better. It, it, it's too far away. It was too far away, Christina. Okay. Well, okay. Jimmy, this, a lot has happened, and I'm really, really glad that we're doing this analysis and everything that's happened since a week later versus doing a review the next day, because a lot has happened since then, and we're going to be talking about all of that, but of course, we have to start out with what happened during the hearing. Some questions that we found either shocking, exciting, maybe a bit disappointing, and some of the answers that uh, the public received as well. But also on top of everything, it was National Whistleblower Day, July 30th. And that day has been going on, like that special day started back in 2013. I've never heard of it. Have you? Why why are we jumping into the show so quickly? Why didn't I get to ask my traditional question? Why didn't I get to say hello to everybody? How are you, Christina? Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. Why did you just drive the car around me? And I want the license. the, The most important start to the show is why now with this christina i understand the uh you know the the after show and and you know collecting everything and 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 getting that but for you why do this now instead of next week then it would have been too late a lot has happened since so that was your inspiration week. for today you just had to I, that's all i just i'm just trying to well the thing is that well, no, since after the hearing, which was July 26th, the day after, I said that should be the next topic for Mysteries with a History on Thursdays at 2.30 p.m. PST. True. We thought it was going to be, but you were going to say but. You were going to say. I was not going to say but. That was the end of my sentence. But, okay. Jimmy. Yes. Now so, let's we'll, get into the let's hearing. Jump into it. Let's jump into it. Uh, uh, you know, people um, around me, I just, uh, uh, speaking on the subject, I just got back from Miami and I was out there, a wonderful uh, group of people. It was a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, I had people coming up to me left and right uh, discussing this. And to put it into context, um, the... Uh, the facility, the theater uh, that we were at um, has a staff and we, that has required break time, right? So it was this break time and, and uh, I I walked, I was hanging out with, you know, the crew, you know, trying to be one of the people, uh, you know, and so it's coming up to me going, man, the UFO hearing. So what did you think? What did you think? Just like, this was not from friends or people that I knew, these were just uh, the people that worked at the theater. And I found that very interesting and very compelling uh, to to have the interest like that coming from people that were just um, quite, quite honestly uh, taking me by surprise. And it was great. And they all, ki- well, no, not all, not all. There were a couple of skeptics there. But But pretty much the reply and the statements were, we're not alone. It's about time, you know, we, we start talking about this. And, yeah, it was very interesting, Christina. It was. And there's a lot of mixed feelings when it comes to the hearing. And I don't blame 
anyone. I, I can understand the questions of why now? What's going on? Why is the government saying these things? Why is it still classified? There's a lot of emotions, there's a lot of confusion. But with this, we're just going to be discussing the hearing and what has happened since that hearing. At right. least that has been made public. Also, Mark, thank you so much for supporting the channel. I do appreciate that. So I'm going to share my screen here. Ooh, got a little bit of feedback. Going to share my screen here so that we can kind of spend, you know, like a little bit of time talking about what happened, what we liked, what maybe we didn't like before we get into the things that have happened post July 26th. Okay, so... um. It was at 10 a.m. EST is about two hours and 15 minutes long. It was located in D.C. There was a little bit of talk that the hearing might have taken place in Florida. That didn't happen, and it ended up being in D.C. The, the rumor for that was because there were potential, and I'm putting this in quotation marks, other whistleblowers that were in Florida. Um, and so Burchett and Luna were like, maybe we should have it here, and that didn't, I ended up not happening. Um, but let's get into the witnesses because there was ru it was rumored uh, there were going to be six witnesses. Only three showed up. We had Grush, Fravor, and Graves. Now, uh, Tim Burchett gave an interview to News Nation uh, the day after the hearing, so July twenty seventh, I believe, and I can I can pull that up in just a moment for you. But he said, "Yes, we were supposed to get six witnesses but the other three were uh pressured out of it they were threatened and one of them worked alongside um nasa and that interview took place july 31st by the way yes and the and let's let's circle back on that because i think that's a very interesting point uh that that burchette has brought up and for once we have somebody, a representative uh, on on the inside there, uh, speaking very publicly about these issues. And we normally don't get, you know, that backstage. We don't, we don't, we don't, you know, it's, it's all secret. We really don't know what goes out of Washington, D.C. We're not, we're not there hanging out. So for Tim Burchett to do that, um, I, I find it totally awesome. Um, but concerning at the same time. So let's circle back to that point because I think it's a, it's a very concerning good one. in what ways? No, I'd like to hear your thoughts. Concerning in what ways? I, I we're supposed to have written into law now this whistleblower protection when it comes to UAPs and everything okay. that is surrounding it. And if people are going to ignore that and put pressure on potential witnesses or people that uh, may be called to testify, uh, not to testify, that's exactly what that, uh, that those words in the NDAA are there for and to protect. So people don't have to worry about coming forward and speaking and suddenly uh, we're finding out that that pressure is still being applied. Um, no, no, I, I find that extremely concerning. Uh, we don't even have the list of names. And now that, do these people have to go uh, and file uh, whistleblower uh, applications and, and, and go the official route to be protected under this? Or should we just handle this like we should, which is, this is what they're doing. Back off. Let them speak. And yeah, I find that I find that very, very concerning. Or again, Christina, do you have to go and make yourself an official whistleblower and and file paperwork for for those protections? Um, it's it just it's concerning to me, and and I don't dig it. I don't dig it at all. Now, um, because of that. We don't know who those three extra witnesses were, right? They're running scared. Will they speak in the future? Um, are they not saying anything at all ever again? You know, and that that's why this is it's it's actually a very big deal. And somebody like Tim Burchett is not afraid to come out and speak about this publicly. And normally 
we would never hear about anything like this going on behind the scenes. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy that uh, Tim Burchett brought it uh, to light. And hopefully uh, those three uh, potential witnesses, I don't know who they were, or what their capacity is, or what they can contribute. But if they were slated to testify, obviously they had something to bring to the table. And but then the weird thing enough. is, if that was the case, if it was planned, why didn't we receive their names beforehand? Like what we did with Grush, Graves, and Fravor. And this is something that a lot of people have been asking. It's creating a lot of confusion of how come these other three whistleblowers that have that Burchett has alluded to, we have no information on them, not even the day of the hearing. And well, but but Christina, you're raising the correct questions. And this is where the media is lacking in this. And I did see your poll. Um, at the beginning, you know, uh, was the media coverage good, you know, better, best, or good to worse, or whatever it was? Answer that and, poll, by the way, for those that are watching this live. I think I said number three. So lacking. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I was lacking. I don't know. I don't know what the numbers are. Let's let's come back to that. Let me get back to my point. The questions you are asking is what the media should be dealing with, and this is a big story. And so for Timber Chet to come out and say this, where's the media coverage? Why don't we have other networks speaking out about this? That, yes, we had three people under oath that testified, but there were supposed to be three others. Um, and the other point to this is that this is where the media comes in. And I'm, I'm not sliding Burchett. But the media is able to, and the press, is able to ask questions and get to the truth, right? So uh, a, a reporter would say, well, there was a press release with three names. So was there originally six and you had to remove three? Or was there six and three got pressured and then only three were there? Or were three actually called, or six, you know, and what's the story? And then three had to back out later after be after formally accepting an invitation. But this is where the press comes in, right? You get to the bottom of this and you find out who applied the pressure. This is a big story. And that's where the media, uh, yes, I said lacking. And this is a case where uh, a, a reporter could really uh, not only benefit from this, uh, as far as uh, reaching out to the community and and reporting the news. But also, you know what? It's good for your career. Go out and get something done. Don't be a copy and paste, you know, journalist or a reporter or investigative journalist. Go out there and get your hands dirty. So it's an opportunity right there. And the media has dropped the ball on this. When when somebody like Timber Shed drops a bombshell, because that's what that was, it needs to be covered and it was ignored. So the poll asks, how do you rate the coverage response given to the UFO hearing by the mainstream media? Was it good? adequate, lacking, or terrible. Now, 44% says lacking. And to my understanding, the only news outlet from what I've seen that has really been incredibly diligent following this story is News Nation. Now, I do not know their political views. I don't care what stance they're on when it comes to politics. They are the only news outlet with the really big following that has been following this hearing before it happened, during when it happened and afterward they are still covering it today a week later and these other these other outlets they touched on it maybe they streamed the hearing and then they dropped the ball as you had said jimmy and then they walked away and this is the biggest story that humanity is having right now and yet they are missing a a great opportunity to cover this and to educate people on the topic, just just on the topic of UFOs. You know, there's this there's this really big another level of confusion when it comes to the government. Should we believe them? Should we not? Why are they coming forward? And look, I get those questions. I really do. But at the same time, for many, not for all, but for many people, when the government says something right it places a foundation for others to maybe get an interest to look deeper into it or to debate about it either way it's being talked about because 
the government is having these hearings. And it seems as if that we will receive more in the future, maybe another one by the end of the year, uh, which is going to be really cool. Now, will we receive more witnesses? That would be fantastic if possible. But for the time being, it's still kind of there, there's kind of blueprints right now. We're, we're not too sure. But it's, you know what, 2023 has been a really promising year when it comes to the UFO phenomenon, at least in my opinion here. Well, now, yes, well said, Christina. And let's let's get to this picture, because I think that this image right here says it all. So if I go back and I start to assess, which I've been, uh, this this hearing, what is the most important, th what's my takeaway? My takeaway is this photograph right here. And this photograph represents three witnesses taking the oath, swearing that they are about to tell the truth in front of the House Oversight Committee on live television. That in of itself is huge. So you have to back off of this and ask yourself, why? Why would anybody? It's one thing to make comments in a, in a documentary, on a TV show, right. you know, on social media, do whatever. That's, that's one thing, and it's great. But it is at another level when you are taking the oath, swearing to tell the truth, in front of the house on live television. So why would anybody choose to lie about E.T., extraterrestrials, UFOs, an alien agenda, uh, crashed flying saucers, uh, backwards engineering program, a sighting, an encounter, all of this? Why would you choose to lie at a moment like this, why would you make that up? And I'd say that the quick answer on this subject, this isn't about, you know, what you were doing over in Afghanistan, or this isn't about your income tax issues, right? <laughs> Where you are probably uh, gonna, going to bend the truth a little bit. But uh, UFOs, aliens, ET, a agenda, contact, disclosure, you're going to swear and take an oath and lie about that on live television in front of a, a congressional oversight committee? I, I just don't see that as, as part of reality. We all know David Fravor's story. He has told it many times. All right? But that's that's not under oath. Right. And and is he claiming it? No, he is telling us about what he saw as a professional pilot. And he did that under oath. So combine that with his past statements, and it becomes a very, very, very powerful moment. The same thing with Graves. And the the part uh, uh, with Ryan Graves, for me, where the, the skeptics out there are going to say, well, he wasn't a witness, or it, it, the, the backwards engineer, that's not what Graves is there to do. Graves is there to share what he knew about what happened on the East Coast during those tra training exercises and what other pilots firsthand told him what they witnessed. Now, that's, that's incredible. And he does that under oath. And then we have David Grush. And David Grush, these statements that he made one after another, which we will uh, pick apart here in just a minute, um, are, again, powerful. Why would you choose to make that up? Now, I'm sure that there are plenty out there in, inside and outside of the Pentagon that, that didn't want Grush to say the things that he said, but that's where we are in history right now. And he did it under oath, right? And he swore to tell the truth. That's why this photograph here is so important. 
There's been a couple of critics out there that have uh, tried to pick this apart about uh, 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 witnesses and 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 what's firsthand, what's secondhand, where's the evidence, where is all of this firsthand stuff and 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 everything else. That's not what this was about, okay? And uh, again, with David Grush, um, his his statements, and I'll turn this back over to you, Christina. His statements when he said, "I can tell you in a skiff." I will be happy to give you that information. I've got names, dates, places, and addresses. I will give all of that to you. So don't say that he didn't. And every time that he said that, the answer was yes. Right? He just he just couldn't give it up live. And I understand why. All right? Oh, uh, let me say one thing really quick. With his, with his agreement with the government... Uh, to uh, to be able to speak freely in public. Um, th- he had to list what he was going to talk about. They had to look through that and see if there was a security risk and or, or you know classified information. And there's stuff that is the dopser, uh, the stuff that he is not allowed to talk about. And of course, I understand that. And he has to respect that agreement. Um, the committee, Watch that information. <laughs> they do. And it was exactly uh, the stuff that was mentioned in the Dobser. We're talking about going out and speaking on camera, making statements, or putting stuff in a book. Right? So that's what the Dobser is there for. So we stayed in bounds, but that doesn't limit him from speaking to everybody in a private setting and exchanging this information. All under oath and all very important points. Yes, and we can do something to bring more openness about the hearing, about disclosure, and about the UFO topic, and that is to let the brutal YouTube algorithm know that there is no longer a, that this is no longer a fringe topic to put on the sidelines. So you can help by hitting that like button right down below to tell YouTube this is a serious topic. And Jimmy, you brought up before, not in today's show, but a while back, and I went ahead and I looked it up as well, um, about the conversation or about the topic of if you read a document, is that firsthand knowledge or secondhand knowledge? If you do a very simple search, the answer is if you read a document, it is firsthand knowledge. Now, a lot of people would think, and I was in that category too, where if you read something, it must be secondhand knowledge because right. you you didn't write it, you didn't witness it, and, and I get that. But from a lawful perspective, it is classified as firsthand knowledge. And this is what is important to bring up when it comes to Grush. He was given a lot of documents. He spoke to a lot of witnesses. I think he said 40, to my knowledge. And while he has been labeled as, oh, you're just you're just spewing hearsay, this, that and the other. Well, if you were just to do, again, just a very simple search is reading a document for a secondhand knowledge. It would it still be classified as hearsay, in your opinion, then, Jimmy? Uh, uh, Well, that depends. You know, that depends. And, And I get that. And it's a great question. When when you are under oath and you're speaking in the terms that they were um, at this hearing, I'm going to call that firsthand. I'm not going to call that hearsay or or try to pin this into. That's not what they were there to do. Certainly, Fravor gave his encounter of what he saw with his own eyeballs. He was also speaking for his wing, you know, uh, 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 um, uh, Dietrich, who, uh, Alex Dietrich, who was not there to testify. So is that, is that now secondhand? Is that hearsay? Well, man, we need to, we need to keep all of this in context here. All right. This is under oath. This is not a conversation uh, on, on the nightly news, that's completely different. This is in a very, very formal setting where you are, man, can you imagine, Christina, you go to somebody's house for dinner, right? You sit down and they go, okay, no, we're going to talk all night. We're going to have a good time, right? Yeah, 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 okay. But swear in this Bible that you're only going to tell the truth. What? <laughs> yeah, just casually over dinner. It's going to be a little, a little bit shocking. You know, how formal is this dinner? I know you said wear a jacket, but man, well, that's what I'm trying to say here. 
that these three witnesses were under oath. And when one question uh, by an attorney, right, and the, you're in some criminal case, and that attorney says, well, how did you know? Do you, do you have any firsthand knowledge of this? Yeah, man, I, I, I read it. I had the paper in my hand. That's firsthand. So when David Grush has got classified documents with this information on it that he hands over to the IG and he hands over to Congress, he's holding it in his hands. It's, at, it's, it's classified. He's, he's holding it. That's firsthand. That is absolutely 100% firsthand. All right, so let's. We, that part of this, we just need to let go, and uh, one, we need to let go. But I'm also glad that we addressed it because I think a lot of people yeah, had too. that question in mind. And again, I was in that category of if you read a document, it must be secondhand knowledge, and it's not. Terry, thank you so much for supporting the channel. So we still have so much to cover. I do not want to do get too deep into this aspect of it. But if you go to the Oversight Committee website. And you look at the UAP hearing that took place. All three witnesses gave a lengthy paper and they, all three of them in their intro, they read this paper, only Grush read it verbatim, but the other two kind of gave summaries. So they had already provided this information to the committee before the hearing even started. Again, mm -hmm. you can find those documents on the oversight committee website. But the reason to why I'm bringing that up is because of some a few things that I wanted to mention that's going to lead us into the second half of this show. And one of them is with Ryan Graves, who was the first person to speak and to give his monologue that was about five minutes long, give or take a little bit. And he was talking about the UAP stigma. He mentioned his um, encounter, at least in this paper aspect that took place in 2009 and also in 2014 as well. But something that he brings up, at least again, in the paper, the document, he says the UAP task force reported in 2021 that there were 11 near misses with UAP. And I understand that number has grown. Now, all three witnesses, well, no, I lie. Fravor and Graves mentioned that with this stigma of the of UFOs, there needs to be a level of transparency from the government. Otherwise, we will not take them seriously. And I am I'm paraphrasing here. But why is this important? Well, because last year we got the Aero Office that is run by Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick. And you and I, Jimmy, we covered the Aero funding hearing that took place earlier this year. And, there, you know, there were mixed feelings about it. Be like, oh, cool, they're getting more funding. Maybe we'll receive more answers. Right. At least that was my standpoint. I was pretty optimistic. After this hearing, my viewpoint has changed. And hey, you know what? We're all about growth. We, we can't be stagnant and have the same thoughts all the time. But I, if you've been following this topic, those that are watching and listening to this, you are aware that Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick dropped, literally dropped a document, not to any news outlet, but to LinkedIn, saying that the hearing was disgusting. And that's what I want to get into next is that paper. And I'll share it on the screen rather shortly, but also the things that have happened since then. Now, when it comes to Arrow, and he mentioned this in his funding hearing again earlier this year, that if there's anyone that wants to come forward and tell your stories, we are open. Right. We, we want to hear it. Turns out Arrow doesn't have a phone number. They don't have an email. They don't have a website. They've only made one Twitter post since their Twitter was created when Arrow opens. And people are asking, is is Arrow even serious about collecting data if they don't have the very basic things that they would need in order to collect data from civilians or even from the military and those that want to come forward and tell their encounters. But also with this paper, right, for those that have read it, you know what I want to say, for those that haven't, put, put this on full volume, because he, <laughs> he was saying this is a disgusting hearing. We are doing everything that we can. Grush, without saying the name Grush, is lying. I'm paraphrasing here, of course. But he wrote that, one, not under oath. And let's just say Susan Goff, 
had some different ideas okay, okay, about so, the yes, paper yes, that yes, he wrote. Yes, 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 yes. Don't get ahead of your skis. <laughs> and, and I don't know I, how to I, ski. I, I, love, I love what you're doing here, though. Christina's flying a mission and she's dropping a few bombs, right? And and I yeah, I I dig where, where you're going with this because there was no way that uh Kirkpatrick could have been happy. All right, that, that's the first thing. The some of the quotes I have uh when, when I read it, I thought to myself that uh I think that Sean is Sean is a bit of a control freak and you can see that in his demeanor. That's fine. Everybody's different. You got a way of operating and you have your methods that, that that's fine. But what he is, what, what he is watching here and what he saw in that hearing is he is no longer in control of this where he thought he could, he could be the distributor of the information and, and the gatekeeper of, of all of this. And that turns out not to be the case. Now, here, check this quote out, lifted right here. I think it's paragraph three or paragraph two. He says, I cannot let yesterday's hearing uh, pass without sharing how insulting it was to the officers of the Department of Defense and Intelligence Community who chose to join Arrow. See, because he's losing control, right? Many with not reasonable anxieties about the career risk this would entail, end quote. Sean doesn't want to lose control. And if there are people that... Uh, have gone to uh, um, uh, uh, give their time to Arrow and to work inside of the program, and they're finding out that there's a completely different situation that is going on and that Arrow may be Arrow in name only, okay, that uh, he's got to roll this in uh, and uh, uh, reel this back in and rally the troops around him. That's what he's trying to do here. And then he said also in this, and, and you can find it, he says, quote, they are truth seekers, referring to uh, Grush, Fravor, and uh, Ryan Graves. They are truth seekers, as am I. But you certainly would not get that impression from yesterday's hearing. And by saying that, and you can see the line right right there, there are truth seekers and so on. He's insinuating that they were lying, that they were not telling the truth. And that is Kirkpatrick's word. I will take it. I will remind everybody the photo that Christina uh, displayed at the be beginning of the show. Three men swearing to tell the truth. Okay. That's, that's a whole nother matter. I would love for Sean Kirkpatrick to take that oath and go under fire. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, the next quote here. Uh, which is very interesting. There, there are two uh, uh, two quotes before we get to Susan Gall. I'll turn this back over to you. I'm sure you have some interesting stuff to mention. He says, quote, the central source of those allegations has refused to speak with Arrow. Now, if that is the case, which that means that Sean Kirkpatrick knows one of the people that Grush is getting his information from and presented uh, presenting Grush with with documents. And why didn't Sean Kirkpatrick bring that up? He had his own hearing. Uh, he had his own briefing. He was right there, right? So that that I find very interesting. And and why wouldn't this person uh, talk to Sean Kirkpatrick? And if that is the case, Sean Kirkpatrick doesn't have the ways and means to compel somebody to bring forward information, something as explosive as this. And it certainly implies with Kirkpatrick's own words in that letter that he published on LinkedIn that he was well aware of an extraterrestrial component to this, that he was well aware of allegations of backwards engineering. He was well aware of the statements that 
that uh, were about to be released that we are in possession of intact alien craft and not from Earth. He was aware of that. He was aware of non-human entities, biologics, right? That Kirkpatrick was aware of all of this. And that's where this letter didn't do him any good. And the criticism that has come out from this, uh, posting this letter, by the way, Kirkpatrick said he chose to do it in a non-professional manner. Right, uh, in a not in not in an official capacity through the government, so he chose to respond to the UFO hearing on his private LinkedIn page. Okay, so he used LinkedIn to do this. And my third quote that I want to uh, get to, and then I want to get to yours. Quote: Arrow has yet to find any credible evidence to support the allegations of any reverse engineering program for non-human technology. Well, wait a minute. You don't get it both ways. You don't get to say, this is where Kirkpatrick uh, stumbled. You don't get to say that, oh, I know the source of these allegations, but uh, they, they refuse to speak to Arrow. Well, wait a minute. You can't have it both ways. You had the opportunity, right? You know the name of the person. You know all of this. And then to turn around and say, I've got nothing. Well, which way is it? Which way is it? You've heard, right? You know what the allegation, you know the person involved. And then you want to turn around and, and say that we've got nothing. You know, it's speaking out of both sides of your mouth. Right. And it makes no sense. And there's so much I want to say, and I'm so excited to say it. And Josh, thank you for supporting the channel. We are going to touch on that. So just hang tight with that question. Okay. So with this whole statement that was released on LinkedIn, it was very unprofessional. Um, News outlets ended up grabbing it. We saw it on Twitter first, the majority of people, right? But I need to read this to you, what Grush had said in his document that he gave to the oversight committee before the hearing. It says here that he was a part of the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, and I was my agency's co-lead in um, unidentified anomalous phenomena and transmedium object analysis, as well as reporting to the UAPTF and eventually the all-domain resolution office, right? Arrow. Now, hold on to that because in the interview with uh, News Nation with Ross Coldhart back in June, he mentions Arrow again, that they have been in contact or that him and Sean have been in contact for about eight years. He mentions, Grush mentions, Kirkpatrick has my phone number. He can call me whenever he wants. He can follow up with me whenever he wants, and he never did. This question was again asked during the hearing, July 26th, where, and I'm paraphrasing here, was, did Arrow get back to you? Did they contact you again? Grush said, no, they did not. The question was, why? He says, I don't know. Okay, so you have all that information, right? Now it's getting really intense because he was a representative to arrow. And in this paper that Kirkpatrick wrote, he is saying, nope, that's not true. You can't, you can't do that. Okay. No, no, that, it's, that's- it's both ways. It's, 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 somebody here isn't telling the truth and I can tell you who it is. It's Sean Kirkpatrick. Well, it, there's it, more. It, well, Jimmy. let's get to that. But in Kirkpatrick's own words, He's not telling the truth because he's giving two truths at the same time. And one that fully supports everything that Grush has said. So go ahead, Christina. Okay, so then there is more. One thing I would like to mention is that during the Aero funding hearing, earlier this year they wanted to increase funding but we don't actually know what their budget is we didn't know then we don't know now that's kind of sketch but Kristen Gillibrand exclusively tells ask a poll that she's requesting a private meeting with Grush okay and for Grush and Kirkpatrick to have a meeting so she is like the big mama bear in this. And she's like, she's like, okay, kids, you guys, you're going to talk it out. You're going to have a meeting and you're going to collect the information because Arrow's looking really bad right now since she is, you know, one of the, the faces when it comes to Arrow. And this is something that I haven't heard covered before. 
And when I came across this, this was written back in July 31st. Okay, so a few days ago. And to my knowledge, and correct me if I'm wrong, I haven't seen it anywhere. Again, the website is Ask a Poll. And they said, Angela Brand said, yes. I asked for a meeting and I asked for Dr. Kirkpatrick to meet with Grush too. Now, will that be made public? I really do hope so. That would be amazing. Will it? Probably not. But the thing is that this is in writing. They are going to have a meeting and it's going to be filled with tension and possibly testosterone as well. It should be in the octagon. (laughs) That's where it should be. The octagon. UFC, hi, yeah, wah, yeah, the octagon. Well, Christina, you really need to get with pop culture. Thank you so much, Cassidy. Thanks, Thank Cassidy. So um, okay, quick poll question, yes or no? Have you ever heard of the octagon? Okay, everybody light it up, light it up right now, <laughs> light it up. But but yeah, you know, it's cage match. Put put on the gloves because uh right now somebody is not telling the truth. And I I think I think everything is is on Kirkpatrick right now. And you brought up one last point before we move on. Uh Gillibrand, they just came off of a funding hearing. Where right. Kirkpatrick now, okay, this is where, this is just my opinion, everybody. This is, I'm just watching and, and, and accumulating the, the, the judgment that I shall pass onto somebody watching Kirkpatrick and watching his body language at that. Um, it's a budget hearing. So this is kind of a formality where you are not going to be asking any tough questions. Got everything you need? And you need any support from us? What are you doing? How's it going over there? Those are the questions that you get, right? A bunch of softball stuff. And Kirkpatrick thought that he was going to be able to get in and get out. The uncomfortable moments there where... He went and said, there's nothing extraterrestrial. He had one sentence that he applied to this. Saw no evidence. There's nothing there. Okay, so what else you got, Kirsten? Uh, 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 Anything else? It was just one of those things, uh, one of those kinds of meetings uh, of formality. That was it, and he got out. It seems to me that Sean has been exposed to information that supports everything that David Grush has said. But it's not Kirkpatrick's position, and I think he has been instructed to to stay in his lane, not drive off the lane, don't pull over into the emergency lane. You're not allowed to do anything but drive this car down the road, and you are going to tow the line. Just like Blue Book. Yep, yep. That's exactly what's going on. I think Arrow is Blue Book by, by another name. You know, and that's the position that Kirkpatrick will. Will Sean Kirkpatrick in the future turn out to be somebody like Jay Allen Heining that comes out and says it was all just, you know, I was just, I was, you know, it, it wasn't me. You know, it was somebody else and I had to do and I was playing a role and I, was, and I would not be surprised if if that's how this turns out that's because awesome. of his demeanor, the way that he's handling himself. He didn't need to write that letter and post that on, on LinkedIn. And I'll tell you, you know what? OK, this is where I'm just going to speak the truth. If UFOs are not real. Then why all the crazy right now? Why the crazy from you, from the government, from the DOD, the pushback with Susan Goff and everything everything else that is going on. There is truly nothing to see here. What are you doing posting on LinkedIn? But leave it alone, right? Stand your ground. There, there's no reason for that. There's no reason for the drama. There's no reason to say you can't have access to a skiff. There is no reason to say these things 
the phenomenon is not real and there's nothing to see here. And the United States government's got nothing and we are truly alone in the universe and nothing is going on. Then why all this drama, Kirkpatrick? And that's it. I'm going to leave it right there. And these are some really great points. Now, Susan Goff had mentioned the department is aware of Kirkpatrick's post which are his personal opinions expressed in his capacity as a private citizen. And we won't comment directly on the contents of the post. Now you can continue reading that if you wish for those watching this on YouTube, but that's the big takeaway is whatever he just wrote, we're not responsible. That is his personal opinions on this. The hearing was not disgusting. All of the things that he said, they are practically irrelevant and i i can just assume here all right if i were in kirk patrick's shoes i'd be fuming the person that's supposed to be backing you up is saying no 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 uh that he he dug his own hole um oh my gosh if i were him i would just be dead on the floor right then and there and just like crying in a puddle of my own tears but this is a big deal and this is this is this is uh really this is drama in the ufo community but like political drama not celebrity drama that means absolutely nothing does this does this mean anything jimmy i mean that, that, that's even a valid question does any of this matter at all when it comes you know, to ufo now, transparency is, ufo phenomenon right 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 this statement uh it's it's kind of a weird one isn't it it's, it's kind of saying two things one, uh, you know, it's to, it, it backing off of Kirkpatrick, right? Distancing themselves from him. But on the other hand, uh, it says uh, it's distancing uh, themselves from David Grush, right? It's like they just want both of these to be pushed away uh, from uh, any further comments uh, from the Department of Defense or the uh, uh, the Pentagon in that she said, um, because she, she, um, how do I, how do I say this? She said that, um, uh, he's speaking, talking about Kirkpatrick. He's speaking for himself, right? right. That, that, that's him. That's a, that's a LinkedIn thing. That is something he posted on, on his Facebook, I Love Kittens page, where he posts his kitty videos that has nothing to do. No, that's what she said. Uh, that has nothing to do with us. And then, um, but then she denied, you know, some of the stuff from David Grush uh, before the Oversight Committee. And the quote, which part of it is here, um, uh, the Pentagon has no information that any individual has been harmed or killed as a result of providing information. That's a pretty heavy statement, right? And not only is it a heavy statement coming from David Grush, and you have to feel for him and his family. I can only imagine what kind of drama. And I saw some stuff uh, get posted today on Twitter um, I'm not going to say anything that was this close to doxing Grush. You need to be very careful with this stuff. You know, the the man uh, is has got whistleblower protection. He goes to the IG, swears under swears under oath. He's he's getting out there and he's saying that uh, his family and him and he's scared and and that people have been hurt and maybe even killed and and this is a very sensitive subject and we understand all of that. And then somebody wants to turn around and start posting personal information about Grush on Twitter. Um, I you oh man. I, if, if I'm Grush, well, he's already lawyered up. I would be going straight after those people. But anyway, that to have the Pentagon come back and have to reply to that, right? We're not uh, the Pentagon. Uh, we haven't done that. Uh, killing people over the I, well, We don't know. Very interesting to have that dance. Next, she went on to say, nor has the Pentagon discovered any verifiable information to substantiate claims that any programs regarding the possession or reverse engineering of extraterrestrial materials have existed in the past or exist currently. I would also say that that is not a wholly truthful statement. You want me to tell you why? You want me to tell you why? Tell me. The Army entered into a CRADA agreement 
with To The Stars Academy to turn around and uh, uh, test materials that were alleged to have come from an alien craft, arts parts, that Tom DeLong had and, and Lou Elizondo and, and Hal put off and entered into agreement, a CRADA agreement, that it would be tested, uh, going to laboratory, and if anything benefited from it, the Army and the military could keep that technology. So that statement here from Susan Goff does not hold water. Right. I would if I was at that press conference or she's doing that, I'm raising my hand. Wait a minute. What about the CRADA agreement with to the stars Academy? Isn't aren't you in possession? Aren't you reverse engineering alien materials there? And to get Susan to say, well, I can't respond to that. That's right. I've, uh, 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 it's not in my it's not in my binder. Uh, get back to me on that. Right. But circle but, back. Yeah. Yeah. Let's circle back on that one. So let's think about that. Right. Uh, Grush's statement. Um, uh, uh, Grush's statements where they as outrageous as they are and they are. It's about a subject of flying saucers and little green men uh, not only visiting Earth, but that we are in possession of our own government and we're being lied to about it. That, that's a very, very, very heavy statement. And to have that happen under oath, that takes it to another level. This is no longer, right? This is no longer UFO Live on Fox TV next month during Sweeps Week. You know, it's not, that's not what this is. It's Sweeps Week. You know, when they get the ratings up, Sweeps Week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, this is going to be a rough show. It's hot in here. It's hot, hot. Sweeps week. Christina Gomez, do I have to have the chat room discuss sweeps week now uh, with you? But but that's not what this is. What kind of money is that? Is that Dungeons and Dragons money? What no, but thank you so much, Alien Frog. And if you are enjoying the show so far, make sure to hit the like button. Let's get to 400 likes. We have 652 people watching this live. Just hit the thumbs up. So easy. Alien Frog says, David Grush needs to be asked specifics. How many UAP exactly? How many NHI? Are you aware of a large UAP with the building around it? Are you aware of more inf information on the Nimitz incident than public? If he were to have been asked those questions, I don't think he would have been able to answer those, at least not blatantly. Now, in a skiff, possibly. I, I would hope so. I would like that to be the case. But for public information to be on the public record, which this hearing was fully on the public record, including his interview for News Nation, Anna Paulina Luna said, can I make this interview part of the public record? The chairman said yes, which was fantastic. But those questions I don't think would have been answered. And Chris, thank you so much. You can give Jimmy a 20% cut of this, I guess. You got it. Definitely. Thank you for that. <laughs> cut. The, the, um, uh, which is a really, really, really great point. And let me say this. What if... Grush said, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the location of the warehouse is at 12345 Happy Street. People it, would be it, storming it. That's right. That's right. You know, right there, Palmdale, California. Just, just go there. And could you imagine the pandemonium? It would be like that scene in Independence Day with all those RVs and motorhomes going across <laughs> the desert. That's what it would be. It would be just like in the movie Contact. Remember that? Oh, man. And so, so that, that, let's, what would you mean that would never happen? Do you remember Storm Area 51? Do you know how what, unhinged people four, are just in general? 4.5 million people said, yep, I am going to RSVP for that. Now, not to say, you know, look what happened. Nobody showed up. But this is a different situation altogether. This is an area 51. This is a location where you could go to the front door. Well, almost. But you could you could stand in front of the building, you know. Now, I, let me make I, – I made a, a comment last night on the show, and 
on, on fade to black about this. So let me let me just say this again uh, for your audience. I think this is my personal opinion. I think that the members of the intelligence community. Uh, those that are working on these secret access programs and any reverse engineering efforts that have been ongoing over the years are well aware of what's been happening with Grush, the UAP task force, others like him, and people coming forward and making statements. Um, I, I would not be surprised if, if a guard on sentry duty outside of some secured facility that has seen something crazy has not come forward and said, yeah, okay, I was there and this is the base I was at and this is what I saw. I wouldn't doubt that something like that has happened. And they have been made aware of this, that they saw this coming. And the, and so about six months ago, the, uh, the base uh, down the street from my house where Skunk Works is, for about a year was very active. And uh, what I am referring to is transport planes, uh, big jets, you know, big, big cargo planes, were taking off all hours of the day and night, like constant. And me and my friends, we would watch them. I videoed a bunch of them. Uh, they're fun to look because they're so big, right? And, you know, in the middle of the night. And, and, and I had this weird thought pop in my head, Christina. I went, they're moving the alien bodies. Right, they're 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 moving the flying saucers. They're they're moving. I did, it was just like popped in my head one night. I just kind of laughed it off. It, it's the way my mind works. I just it was just like one of those thoughts. You know, yeah, how, how you have a crazy thought once in a while, right? And you keep it to yourself. And I had that thought. And over the last six months, crickets. I haven't seen them. I mean, it was daily. All day long, giant things taking off and turning. I yeah, that's that's insane. And it goes to show that we always need to watch what's going on outside of our home, outside of our bubble, because things are happening right under our noses. And Robert Bigelow said this as well. You know, aliens could be just right under our noses, but we wouldn't notice because we're not looking in the right places, which a big highlighted question that was asked during the hearing was by AOC. And she asked the panel, if you were me, where would you look? And Fravor said, well, if you don't know where to look, you know, you're, you're, you're in a pickle because there, it's not going to, it's not going to be blatantly obvious. Grush said, I can give you that information, but, but behind closed doors. And then Mace, she said, can I have that list? And he says, heck yeah, right after the hearing. Did she get that list? Man, I really hope so. I'd love to see too. that I list. So that I would be so. amazing. But a lot of people are asking, Jimmy, what's next? This is a question that any guest that has been on any mainstream news outlet talking about the hearing, the biggest question is, What's next? Yes, we got a hearing. Yes, it's been in some areas hyped about others. It's just been, you know, like oh, this was a crap hearing, whatever. But I think one of the biggest takeaways is what was published. I think it was the day after and I have it right here was the select committee. And this is really big. I'm going to share my screen here for those to take a look at that. So let's pull this up. But the purpose of this select committee is to have, okay, would be to conduct a comprehensive investigation into United States government's response to UAPs. Among the specific issues, the committee would delve into um, our matters of oversight, including budget transparency, overclassification, and the government's reluctance to be accountable to congressional oversight. Because this was a really big takeaway from this hearing is, yes, we got to hear about UFOs and their experiences, but also another really big takeaway was is that and Grush had said this a misappropriation of funds that is big no one wants to hear that you and I we don't want to hear that because we pay taxes and we don't know where that money's going right but this select committee that was signed off by and I'm going to zoom in right here by Tim Burchett Jared Maskovich Anna Paulina Luna and Matt Gates 
they're saying we need to create a select committee to look into all of this and more because Fravor had also used the word over classification that there is just all this information and a lot of it should be made public but there is just this level of complexity that doesn't need to be there now i'm not sure if we've received news on if it's been approved or not but this, I think, would make a difference and would improve the conversation of UFOs in the government. I would assume that after releasing a letter like this, and certainly after Grush's comments, I've got the addresses. Sure, I'll give it to you. I'll show you. I'll tell you exactly where they are. Well, everybody would, if they didn't respond before the hearing, they've certainly cleaned out the garage after. So you're going to go to Lockheed. They're going to come on in. There's nothing to see here. Yeah, yeah. No, you can go wherever you want. And there's going to be nothing there. And I think that that would go with anything else. Um, my guest last night, Dr. Bruce Solheim, said that you know it's it right now it's a shell game and i agree right where anything or any of this you think that there's anything at wright patterson after after that ufo hearing or as soon as um lou alexando uh lou elizondo started to say the things that he had said and others coming forward uh about this subject that the the level of comfort that everybody has been under for so long that suddenly it's it's exposed. And that comfort level isn't where it was just a few years ago and for the last seven decades. It's not like that anymore. Area 51, Christina, Area 51 is out in the middle of a nuclear testing range in the middle of the desert in Nevada. Who's going to drive out there in a car? Nobody. Who's going to walk out there? Nobody. Nobody. It, it, you, you have... Uh, you know what I mean? You've got a a, 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 a a very, very big buffer zone in front of you. Now we know where Area 51 is, and we know what it's about. So it's that, you, you see what I'm saying? That comfort zone isn't there anymore. Lockheed Skunk Works, especially with the Wilson Davis document, uh, uh, Edwards Air Force Base, you know, Wright Patterson, these locations are the ones that we know about. And uh, if I, if I, if, and this was brought up uh, with the, uh, the Canadian MP's letter that was uh, released last month about this very subject. If I was the United States right now, and if I was Lockheed, if I was, if I had stuff like this inside of this country and I was working on it, would it be here today? It wouldn't. It wouldn't. It'd be out, out, out of the, it's gone. It's and that, that is something that would only be logical. Once that information has come to light, you're going to move it. I mean, that's what we do when we hide our stash of chocolate so that our siblings or our kids don't find it, right? Why can't the government do the same? It's a great question and one that is very plausible. Now, I did want to mention a really cool side story about Representative Anna Paulina Luna, who is one of the main people that created this hearing, that organized it. What I found out is not only is she just recently a congressman, um, but she was also part of the United States Air Force. She was a veteran who served at the Air National Guard in Portland. And when she was speaking with Libertarian Times, she recounted a UAP event that took place in 2018. And this is what she said. When I was stationed at Portland Air National Guard, there was an incident that occurred around roughly 2018. Some of our pilots had responded, and when they got back, they were pretty quiet about it. Someone pulled me aside and mentioned that he or she thought it was potentially a UAP, and that was my first military conversation on it. And with that knowledge now, it only seems appropriate that she helped organize this hearing with Burchett 
with Gates and Maskovich as well. Now, one thing that was kind of touched on, but we didn't talk about today so far, was that Burchett was supposed to be the chairman for this hearing. But once the hearing started, it turns out it was a man by the name of Grothman. And no one really highlighted that. People touched on it, but that was about it. And when Burchett was asked about this in one of his interviews, I believe it was for News Nation. He just said, it's, you know, this is a bipartisan issue. It doesn't matter who's the chairman. I'm just really glad that we even got this hearing. But do you have any information on that or any knowledge on that by chance? I do. And, you know, what is interesting uh, uh, about that, first off, let me back up. That incident um, up in Oregon with the F-18s, FA-18s, that was a that was a pretty significant sighting and one that has has been documented, not only with uh, uh, flight tracker software, but uh, also uh, conversations and radar uh, data. And that uh, that made it into a little I think it was the drive. I think uh, Tyler Rogaway uh, wrote about it first. That's where I, I had uh first reported on that and uh, that was a very significant sighting i did not know that anna paulina luna was part of the air national guard at that time and was on base during that incident that was a very significant sighting and uh yeah yeah uh, two things had happened almost at the same time that week maybe it was about two weeks apart uh, we had that going on up in Oregon with the Air National Guard and the FA-18 Hornets. And then we had the sighting that went over uh, the New Mexico-Arizona border that was seen by civilian aircraft, uh, followed uh, with uh, radar tracking stations in both states of New Mexico and Arizona. And, and that happened, I, again, we had uh, the, I think it was the Air Force, maybe the Marines were involved with that, as well as the private aircraft that had seen this, the, the ground reporting stations, and what happened up in Portland. Uh, very, very interesting points, and I did not know that she was part of that. Uh, no, it, it was also new information to me as well, and I thought if it was new to me, I think someone else is going to be like, whoa, that was cool information the way that I reacted when I first read that. But also, can we get to 500 likes? Let YouTube know that this, is, no, that no, this topic we're, we're is blowing, trending right now. We're blowing past that. We're going past 500 okay, to 600. Okay, let's set to 600. Okay, you know what? Yeah, but let's, let, let, let's start off one after another. So <laughs> there <laughs> is... <laughs> I didn't answer your question. So let's uh, uh, when when we're at this what next thing and it comes to funding like this, this is where uh, the Senate, I think, is going to approach this a, a little bit differently. And if if you are uh, performing a shell game or if you are what, once the uh, investigation level stuff starts happening with the Senate and the House, too, as well. Uh, you, they have very, very powerful ways of getting stuff done. And if you are moving stuff around, there will be a paper trail for that. And there will be flight logs for that. There will be trucking logs for that. And I don't think you're going to want to be caught uh, moving stuff. But I think that that is what's going on. The second, I don't think that the freedom of spending and unaccounted for dollars, I think those days are, are numbered and are coming to a very quick close for a lot of different reasons. It's not just the UFO issue. This comes into play, but in, in budgets in general, the United States credit rating just got uh, downgraded the other day. This doesn't happen often. And what happens with that? Well, people like you and I, uh, we feel it directly in our pocketbooks. The mortgage rates just went up uh, over 7%. And people are going to have to start asking themselves why. We need to be more, um, this isn't about politics or anything, more fiscally responsible. And if it turns out that we've been throwing away money and not accounting for it into the backwards engineering of extraterrestrial spacecraft, that part is fine. We can backwards engineer. We need to be accountable for where and how that money is spent. 
Right, because right. the Pentagon hasn't passed an audit in the last five years. I don't think they've ever passed an audit. Don't be don't be too kind. Well, that was that was stated in the I, hearing. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's the only time I, I think they've only been audited for the last five years and they failed every one. I'm not sure if they were audited before. We need to be very careful. I don't think they I don't think I don't think anybody it, But it, it's it, it's to enhance your point. Yeah, exactly. I don't think they were ever audited, but when they were, it didn't it didn't end well. It didn't end well. And when when we have a situation, um, although it's 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 not a lot of money uh, by any standard, but the twenty two million dollars that was uh, budgeted and and given to Bigelow and ASAP, ATIP, whatever you want to call it, um, that's twenty two million dollars just gone. Where's the accountability? What what was that money spent on? That was one year, right? One year of money a- until the next budget, and then the, the program was dropped or whatever. But uh, what was that money spent on? What was the accountability? What did they spend $22 million on? And from my understanding, it was an office of one, Lou Elizondo. That, you know, but that's what I'm talking about, the accountability of where this money goes. And I think that the Senate and Congress has had enough of this, and we need to start having some accountability. And, and when you do that, then you have a paper trail. Uh, you, you can see where things have gone and what programs this money is being spent on. And one of those, I don't think you're going to be able to hide alien spacecraft for too much longer. I hope not. I I think that a level of disclosure is in our grasp. But what I say often, and I'm going to say it again, is at the end of the day, disclosure is not going to come from the government. It will come from the people. But these types of conversations that we're having, these conversations that the government is having, it's opening people's eyes to the mere possibility and to ask bigger and better questions than ever before. But disclosure is going to come from people like us. Not not saying that we're going to drop the bomb and be like, guys, aliens are here. I have pictures. I have the body in the freezer. That's not what I mean. But what I'm getting at is, you know what would be so awesome? To have another Phoenix Lights, like 1997, but bigger and better and more extravagant, where millions of people, millions and just all of us, all several bajillion people of us here on planet earth all see it that would be amazing but what i i wanted to touch on this point by josh what about the unidentified submarine object okay this i have to give full credit to the fifth pillar of um emphasis dan warren and he has a great social media platform both on instagram and tiktok but he makes a video of highlighting multiple people talking about sightings over the oceans have it be graves fravor and even representative gates as well those are three people that were specifically highlighted in his video but he was saying that the ocean was significantly highlighted in this hearing where things were happening on the East Coast. Jimmy, we have done multiple shows talking about UFOs being seen over water. Is there a connection there? Are there a significant amount of bases under the ocean? Why are we seeing so many UFO sightings either either over the coast of California or during this hearing on the east coast we talked about the malibu base we've we've talked about the possibility of are there extraterrestrials are they even extraterrestrials they're living in the oceans right here on planet earth do they have bases here and then it could lead to this possibility of the word non-human intelligence could be a catch-all of creatures what I want to call them that aren't human, but that have lived here and that have maybe lived longer than humanity ever has. This is just merely a question, but, but Dan Warren brought up a really interesting point that I think should be discussed. Now, when you were watching the hearing um, with us, Jimmy, did that even cross your mind? It does all the time. I think about it a little lot. I do. I do. I think about it. When um, I, the, the ocean, we talk about the universe being a big place. 
go out, if you ever get the opportunity, a lot of you have, right? But when you go out in the middle of the Pacific or the middle of the Atlantic Ocean and, you know, get far enough away from shore where you can't see the shore, where you just look around and it's nothing but water, it is crazy the feeling of isolation that you have in monster it, soup. It, it, it is it, exactly what it is, where it is so massive and so big, right? So, uh, from uh, my balcony uh, on this cruise that I went on a few months ago, sitting on my balcony, and uh, it was early in the morning. I'm eating breakfast. And I'm by myself, and I'm just looking out. I have my feet propped up on, on the railing. I'm drinking coffee, taking it all in. And the sun was just right at the right angle and just lighting up the water, and I just had a perfectly clear view. And then I was looking at the right place at the right time. I'm going to say it was about a mile away. And I see something, right. it was gray, by the way, rise up out of the water. It wasn't a craft. Well, it might have been, but my point is it came up and it was a hump and then was, was there for a minute and then went back down under the water. Now, I said to myself, I got to see a whale. I was at the, my eye, because if I, anywhere else it's happening, you don't see it, right? The ocean's a big place. You understand what I'm saying? And But I happen to be looking at the right spot at the right time. That's what it's like with UAPs and USOs and USOs and whatever you want to call these things out in the open ocean. If you witness something out there, you're at the right place at the right time because it's big. It's huge. Anything could be going on. And when I sat back, I thought to myself exactly the point that you and everybody else is making. Huh. What else could be under there? Well, the answer is a lot, a lot. And and I saw this ginormous, it was like an island, man. I'm going to tell you, it was, whatever it was, it was big. And I'm sure it was a whale. All right, That's, I'm not implying anything else but that. But I saw it right place at the right time. And if you're not looking, anything can come and go out of the ocean. And, and we would never know it. It's a great hiding place. And the next point is there are rumors. I've heard the chatter, talked to the people. Uh, I mentioned it a few times, but I, it, I'm going to say it again right now that the Navy knows where. The Navy knows of an entrance and exit point in the Atlantic Ocean. They know the frequency of the communications. They know when the UAPs, the UFOs are coming in. They know when they're coming out and they have ships on point and they know exactly the location of at least one of these bases in the Atlantic Ocean. All right. I'm just right now saying it on the record. And should, should this stuff be made public? You know, I, what is the danger, Christina, which takes us to uh, that part of your question. What is the danger? What is the danger here of telling us the truth about life in the universe and whether we're, what's the danger? Is there an inherent danger to that? No. Well, those that have knowledge have power. In order to maintain that power, you need to make sure that no one else is knowledgeable in the things that you're attempting to hide. So is that the case here? But let's say these bases are very deep, deeper than what you can go with a submarine or with a scuba diving suit. If those coordinates were made public, so many people would lose their lives attempting to see this for themselves. And let's say they were to encounter sure. this, this sure. base. What if that other species, whatever that may be, is it us from the future? Is it some very ancient civilization? You know, I can go on and on and on. What if in some way they were hostile and wanted to keep their base a secret that they would also take the lives of humans? We, 
that's the things that humanity does when a secret is let loose, right? They, they silence them. Why can't these entities do the same? Now, we're just hypothesizing here. We're just thinking outside of the box. We are not sure if that's the case or not. But the oceans, only about 10 15% have been mapped and explored. That leaves a significant percentage of where these bases could potentially be, where anything or anyone could hide and never be disturbed. And let me tell you, I'd like to be there. Yeah, that'd be nice. But at the same time, these are the questions that we have to ask ourselves because the ocean, it is monster soup. I am not joking when I say that. Mm -hmm. All these fishermen, from across countries, all of their cultures mention monsters that are in the ocean, all of these weird cryptids that are there. And that's what makes it so scary is because it is classified in the category of the unknown. We don't know anything past the shore. That's right. And the other, and, and the other point that you're making, and let's be very clear here. If... If our government is in possession of technology that has been weaponized and they're making laser cannons, right, or some, whatever it may be, I, I'm not interested in that. And what, some things need to be kept secret. I get that. You don't want that technology or that knowledge to fall into the wrong hands, right? You, you just don't. I get that. But... Is their life out there that is visiting this planet? That I have the right to know that. The world has the right to know that. You are not the keeper of that kind of knowledge and those kinds of discoveries. If there is a, a, a technical reason, a high engineering aspect, a crazy situation that, that doesn't need to be made public, I, that's not what I'm talking about. We want to know. Is E.T. visiting this planet, and are you aware of it? That's all we want to know. So the, the, the that's the million-dollar question, Jimmy. You're right. We all want to know that information, but this hearing in particular, this hearing that took place July 26, 2023, the title literally is Unidentified Anomalous Phenomenon Implications of National Security public safety and government transparency that was the the focus of the hearing was national security are people at risk with these ufos that's why fraber was there that's why graves was there that's why they mentioned the things that they did and ogles i think that's how you say his last name mentions he asks the question do we have that capability do we have that equipment all of them answered no are, do they have interest in our nuclear weapons? They said, yes, it's a possibility. And that was crazy. But another question really, and I'm paraphrasing for this one, it was, are they a threat? And the answer was, yes, we are not familiar with these craft, at least to public knowledge. These pilots are not familiar with these craft when they're out in, up in the sky. Threat. I think potential it was potential threat. Yeah, okay, potential. but but you you get my point. The thing is that this hearing with the focus was national security, and for the most part, it was a bipartisan issue. A lot of these congressmen had really, really fantastic questions. One of them was feisty. I'm not gonna name that person, but you know who I'm talking about. But even online, a lot of people were asked. What were your thoughts on the hearing? What did you think about it, right? This was a, a, a big conversational piece for people decently in the community or that have a background knowledge in UFOs, have it be a scientific aspect or a research type aspect. But one that I thought was uh, comical, and this is, doesn't matter on what, you know, what side of the fence you're on here, but I'm gonna share my screen here because this, I thought this post went viral, but it was mentioned uh, Bob Lazar oh, yeah. had, had something to say about it. Now, he's not much of a talker from what we've seen him mention publicly, but he did a very, it was like 22 second long video. And all he could say was, I told you so. And again, it doesn't matter what side of the fence you are with Bob Lazar, if you believe him or if you don't, he didn't have to comment on it at all. But he did. And it was just something that I thought, I need to share this. This is, this is, this is too good not to share. 
We are, I, I truly believe, we are now at that point in history where we can start to feel some form of vindication is the word that everybody wants. Do you feel vindicated? Do you feel vindicated? Well, okay. All right. Everybody wants, you know, the, the answer to be, yes, I feel vindicated finally. Well, I, I, I don't think we're quite there. I, we're, we're still, but man, right? We can feel it. We can reach out and touch it now. And so are we at that moment where somebody like Bob Lazar gets a chance to say, I told you so. Yeah, we're, we're, we're getting pretty close. It's getting pretty interesting. And now I don't know, uh, Christina, as we wrap this up, great show today, by the way, one of the, one of the best we've, we've done, and we've done a lot of shows. Um, it, what's next? Is it going to be the Senate? Are we going to get something formal from them? I would expect so. Um, I think that we should uh, have a continuation with the House. And I don't think that Burchett and Luna and Gates uh, are, are anywhere close to being done with this. I think that they've just now opened the door. So I think we can continue uh, to get hearings. Will we eventually get to something more formal? I hope so. Uh, the last thing you you said this earlier, and it's it's really true. You know, you would love to have a, a Phoenix Lights uh, type incident. I, I f I've always felt. I hate to say that I'm never wrong, but I'm, I'm kind of never wrong. I'm wrong once in a while, but I'm kind of never wrong. I think that the government is trying to get out in front of something. They know. I just don't know what that something is. I don't. Is it uh, the knowledge of, are they looking at something coming into our star system? And they've been observing it for a while. They're in communication and they have a, a drop dead date of the arrival of something. Could be. Maybe it's something like, like the that. Three body problem. Great deal. Uh, it, the, it's the, the three body problem. Is it that? Do they know that somebody has escaped with a USB thumb drive, right? A thumb drive, which, um, you know, right, you know, this big, right? Something that big with a terabyte of data on it, right? Um, here is, uh, uh, this is what's interesting to me, to me. That's two terabytes SSD, right? That's it. That's all it is. Look, at, look, 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 look. Is somebody running around two terabytes? You know how much two terabytes is? It's a lot of space. It's a lot of space. Is somebody walking? You can put it in your back. That, and, anyway, is there some data that has escaped? And they know this, and they're trying to contain it, and and it's out of their control. Could it be something like that? So they're trying to get out in front of this. I, I, I'm not so sure, but it seems to me that we are getting an awful lot, an awful lot all at once. It, so it feels at, that way. And the thing is that people want to know, and I can tell you that many young people are getting their heads out of their cell phones and paying attention to these things. Now, if only the mainstream media could be more serious about covering all of this, it would change the first the conversation, but also our perspective and the stigma when it comes to the UFO topic. Now, you mentioned, Jimmy, this is one of our best shows. And look, I feel like the last few shows have been amazing. But fun fact, these last few shows that we've done together have been the most viewed shows on this channel. Each show has over 50,000 views. And I'm really shocked about that. And thank you for everyone that watches this, that hits the like button. We do really appreciate that. And it, you know what? You're, you're part of the cool club. Looking at these topics for at a, you know, in, in a very serious manner, because this is the most important conversation that humanity is having right now. And as you asked, Jimmy, what's next? Well, we have the select committee. That's next. It's a possibility. We don't know if it's set in stone just yet, but it's asking bigger questions. It's listening to more people. And this hearing set a foundation to 
allow others to come forward with a level of confidence, hopefully at least, to also share their stories and to allow people to think outside of their their little cubicles and to think what is going on out there what are the mysteries that are happening right here on planet earth and these things are so much more interesting to ponder than what the latest fashion trend is and what shade of who knows what looks good you get what i mean so i, I think i, I, I think there there's amazing things ahead and all we can do is really just keep our eyes on the skies Thank you so much, Christina. What a great show today. Thank you for everybody hitting that like button and, and hanging out with us. Truly exciting times. I'll see everybody tonight on uh, Fade to Black. I've got a crazy weekend in front of us. Normally, tomorrow's my Friday. I get, to, well, it is Friday, but it's literally uh, my day off. And no, 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 I've got to go to work for the next three days and then uh, come back to Fade to Black. Tonight, I'm doing... A very interesting show with Kadrich Olsen. Yeah, he's got to be from Norway. Yeah. That's where I would do a fake Norwegian accent and get a good laugh out of everybody, but I'm not going to do it. Tonight we're doing energetic beings and entities that may be controlling us. So we're going to be doing that tonight on Fade to Black. I'll see everybody tonight. Christina, you're the very best. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jimmy. And cool thing about Norway, they have the best chocolate I've ever tried in my life. Okay, their chocolate is on point. And Jimmy's like, what are you doing, Gomez? Um, it's true. I really, really like it. And April, thank you so much for supporting the channel. It says, I think they know something is about to go down. Can you smell what they're cooking in the kitchen? Because if that is the case, do you think we are ready for whatever information they are going to drop? Do they? Do you think we're going to have this mass level of disclosure where the entities potentially might show themselves in some way? Are we ready for that? Or will it just ruin everything? Or will it create something better? Don't know. I'm, I'm in the dark with so many of you as well. Uh, before we end the show, please answer the poll that is on YouTube. We have 615 votes. And the question is, how do you rate the coverage response given to the UFO hearing by the mainstream media? Is it good? adequate, lacking, or terrible. The majority of you voted on lacking at 49%. And I am with you on that. Now, what's a terrible? Eh, kind of. But at least some are covering it, such as News Nation, right? But again, 49% of you say lacking. Not too bad. 23% say terrible. 13% say adequate. And 14% say good. I like the optimists out there. Is that the case, really? I don't think it was great, but it was decent-ish. If you enjoyed the show today, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, hit the notification bell as well, because tomorrow is Strange Weekly News at 3 p.m. PST, where I'll be covering all the strange news and mysterious headlines from around the world. Follow me on Twitter at eyes underscore on the skies for all of my updates and news. Also check out my Instagram at Strange Paradigms where I share pictures and reels as well. But if you want to continue this conversation, bring it over to the Discord server with 2,000 other like-minded members. Share your thoughts, your insights, your experiences, and more. I know one of my amazing moderators will share that link in the live chat. I want to say thank you to everyone watching this live, all the Super Chats, Super Stickers, YouTube members, and Patreon supporters, and of course, all of my incredible moderators as well. I could not do this show without you. That is it for today. I will see all of you tomorrow. Be safe, and remember, keep your eyes on the skies.